This conference is brought to you by CallStack, a total software engineering consultancy. Come on out, Nicola. Awesome. So, Hi everyone, I'm super excited to be back on stage here at React Universe 2024. And let me start on how this stage is so close to my heart, as I had the honor to speak here both in 2023 and 2022. But this stage is also crucial, is a crucial venue for the React Native team. We know this conference has rebranded to React Universe, but we can't forget the long history of announcements that we shared on this same stage. For example, my colleague David, in 2018, first introduced the new architecture to the open source community. And just last year, Zvetan from the Hermes team introduced static Hermes. So we thought to keep the tradition, today we want to open this conference celebrating some of the achievement that React Native collected in this last year and give you a sneak peek of what's coming for the future of React Native. So my name is Nicola Corti. I'm an engineer on the, React, on the React team at Meta. And today, we want to jump in through, into like how amazing 2024 is and still will be for React Native. So let's start with April, when we release React Native 074. 074 was a huge milestone for us, as it came with a bunch of new layout capabilities thanks to the release of Yoga, Yoga 3.0. But one of our most anticipated features was enabling br bridgeless mode for new architecture early adopters. The feedback that we received from 074 and all the people that tried the new architecture over those last months helped so much in shaping what the new architecture is today. Then we jumped to May, when we had one of my favorite conferences, ReactConf. I'm sure you heard of it. During the keynote day two, we gave you updates on how React Native has evolved so much over the last years, how it's used by Meta and by our partners. And also, we announced how the new architecture is now in beta and ready to be tested by you all, developers around the globe. Again, this announcement was another milestone in making new architecture the default. And we received so much user reports, bugs, and feedback from you all, which helped us improve the new architecture so much. We are so, so grateful for you trying it out. Another, uh, another update that we shared at ReactConf was the introduction of React Native frameworks. In June, we shared this blog post where we updated our recommendation on what is the best way to, use, to write React Native apps in 2024. And it is, it is by using a React Native framework. So in case you missed this blog post, let me reiterate on how in 2024, the recommended way to write React Native apps is to use a framework. So yes, you should be using a framework and you should be using Expo to write React Native apps. <laughs> and just a few weeks ago, we released React Native 075. This is another crucial release as it contains several new features as well as the implementation of the various announcements we shared at ReactConf. So let's jump on one of the first features. We added support for percentage value in your gaps and translation transform. This allows for better layouts and brings React Native a bit closer to what you're used to on web. Crucially, this is one of the first features that is available only for new architecture users. And you will see there will be more features like this one that will be available only for new Arc users out there. This release also contains several bug fixes for the new architecture. A lot of the bugs that we fix are to make possible that all the thousands of libraries in the React Native ecosystem work well in the new architecture. And here I want to give a huge shout out to folks from Soft Dimension, Expo, and Coldstack for the huge amount of help that they gave us in migrating and adding support for all the libraries out there in the ecosystem. And if you, I guess they deserve an applause, totally, totally. 
And if you want to learn more about the challenges that my team and like library maintainer and so on faced in migrating libraries and APIs to the new architecture, you definitely don't want to miss a talk from my colleague Arushi. Getting React Native new architecture to you today at 3 p.m. And also, this release contains some changes to align with the framework recommendation we shared at ReactConf. Specifically, we now move the React Native template to its own separate repository, and we are also planning to deprecate the React Native init command by the end of 2024. Let me spend a couple of seconds more on this last bit. The React Native init command. Well, you should be using Expo to create new application, but if you're still using this command, in 0.75, you will see that this command emits a warning, like this one, telling you that the init command is deprecated. In 0.75, you can still use this command as you used before. But starting from next year, this command will cease to work. And you will have to use the CLI command that you see uh, written at the bottom. It will still behave as before, but we just want users that are uh, trying React Native for, for the first time to give them the best developer experience that, are, that is available on the market. So again, if you're using React Native in it today, you can still keep on using it, but you will have to invoke explicitly the React Native community CLI in it command. And so from August, we reach September, where we are now at React Universe. And as a promise, we want to give you a sneak peek of what we have in store for you for the present and the future of React Native. And for this, I want to invite my colleague Ricardo on stage. OK. Hi, everyone. It's so good to be here on stage with you today. Uh, I'm Ricardo. I'm a software engineer at Meta working in the React team. And I, can, I really can't wait to talk to you about what we are working on and what are the very um, features that we are going to release in the very next future to you. So to release anything in the open source, we need a new release of React Native. So right after the conference on, on Monday, we are going to start the work to release 076, our next release. So on Monday, we are planning to do the branch cut of the new release, which will be on RC0, the first release candidate for this version. And we usually expect six to eight weeks to stabilize the, the new release. Uh, and to, to get there, we're going to have a release candidate basically every week with improvements, stabilization fixes. And we kind of expect to have a stable version of uh, 0.76 out between the mid and the end of October. Why we are so excited about this release? Because we are going to, really, to ship to you a couple of things that we are very excited about. So the first thing is our next generation debugger stack. But I don't really want to talk about this right now, because right after this talk, my colleague Alexand uh, is going to have a full talk about the new React Native debugger. So please don't miss the talk. There are a lot of exciting news coming up for the debugging experience. The next announcement is very close to my heart, and as you might guess, is related to the new architecture. We are so excited and very proud to announce here uh, in Poland on, at React Universe that starting from 076, the React Native new architecture will be enabled by default in your projects. So what does that mean for you practically? Well, if you're using the community CLI, the new architecture will be enabled in all the projects. So that means that whenever you create a new project with CLI, this will, the new architecture will be on. And if you migrate your app following the upgrade helper instruction, you're going to enable the new architecture. For Expo, if you're using Expo, the new architecture will be enabled in new project only, starting from SDK 52. The plan is, of course, to be completely aligned on uh, the new architecture, and support for all the projects will arrive in a later version of the SDK. Now, if for any kind of reasons you don't want or you can't uh, use the new architecture, we are still offering you a way to opt out from it. And the instruction is, uh, are, they are the same of, that you are using now to turn it on, but reversed. So on Android, 
you just have to go to the gradle.property file and you have to turn off the new arc enabled flag. On iOS instead, you have to install your dependencies with the pod install command, but with the RCT new arc enabled flag set to zero. If you're using Expo, and again, from SDK 52 and greater, um, you can change the new arc enabled flags in the Expo build properties config plugin. But React Native is not just the new debugger, is not just the new architecture. There are multiple pieces that composes it. For example, Hermes. And don't miss out, talk by my colleague Zvetan Mikov tomorrow at 11.15 on Hermes better performances uh, with runtime bytecode translation. React Native is not just that, and it's not just Meta, actually. It's also Microsoft and out of three platforms, is Expo and Frameworks, but it's also all the libraries that Callstack, Software Mansion, and all other our partners are maintaining. But on top of that, React Native is you, is all the app developers and all the independent maintainer that creates application tools and are able to make React and React Native shine and the greatest frameworks that it is today. So I want for every one of you to give a round of applause to each other for the amazing work that you are doing. And with that, we want to wish you a great conference and a great time today at React Universe. Thank you so much.